Hello, and we're going to take a look at a variety of mold conversion fact problems to give you some more practice in doing this. If we look at problem number one, find the number of formula units in 7.77 grams of sodium chloride. So remember to write down our given quantity first, and then we can set ourselves up for our first conversion factor. When we do any of these problems, the mole is the central concept. So we need to be converting to moles if we're not in moles. So we're in grams and we need to get the moles before we can do anything else. So one mole is going to go on the top of the conversion factor and the molar mass of sodium chloride, 58.5 grams, will go on the bottom of the conversion factor. Then we need to convert to formula units of sodium chloride. Since sodium chloride is an ionic compound, the formula unit is the representative particle for sodium chloride. So there are always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles in a mole. So there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in one mole of this substance. When we do our math, we're going to take 7.77 divided by 58.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Your answer should be, and if you haven't worked it out yet, pause this video and work it out and compare it to my answer. You should get an answer of 8.00 times 10 to the 22nd formula units. In problem two, we have 44.0 liters of carbon dioxide. We want to find mass. We need to convert to moles first. Remember moles is the central concept. So one mole goes on the top of the conversion factor. There are 22.4 liters in a mole at standard temperature and pressure. Now that we're in moles, we can convert to grams. So grams goes on the top of the conversion factor, moles goes on the bottom. When we have grams and moles in the same conversion factor, we're always using the molar mass of the substance. So for CO2, it is 44.0 grams per mole. When we do the math, we have 44.0 divided by 22.4, times 44.0. Do the math and pause this video. What you should have gotten is 86.4 grams of CO2. In problem number three, we're starting with 200.1 grams of iron. We want to find atoms of iron. Again, we have to convert to moles first. If you're not in moles first, you have to get to moles. So to get to moles, we need to divide by the molar mass of iron, which is 55.8 grams in a mole. Now we want atoms. Atoms is the representative particle of iron, since iron's an element. So there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. So our problem is 200.1 divided by 55.8 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Do the math and pause the video. You should have gotten 2.159 times 10 to the 24th atoms. In problem number four, we want to find the density of methane gas at standard temperature and pressure. Density is mass divided by volume, and in our case is the molar mass divided by the molar volume of the gas at STP. So the molar mass of CH4 is, let me check my work here, 
16.0 grams. 12 grams for carbon plus 4 hydrogens is 16. And we're going to divide by the molar volume, which is 22.4 liters. So our problem is 16 grams divided by 22.4 liters. Do the math, pause the video, and you should get 0 0.714 grams per liter. Number five, you're finding the molar mass of a gas. We know the density is 2.8. 86 grams per liter at standard temperature and pressure. Density times volume equals mass. So here's the density of our gas. If we multiply it by molar volume, which is 22.4 liters in one mole, we can find the mass of the gas. So our problem is 2.86 times 22.4. Do the calculation, pause the video. And you should get 64.1 grams per mole as the molar mass. Now, when you do these problems, you can also double check to see if you have them set up right before you do these calculations. And I've gone over this in class, but I'll review it again. You want to make sure that your units cancel. So let's take a look at this problem, starting at the last conversion factor. Looking at the denominator, we have moles. We have moles in the numerator over here, so they cancel. Grams is in the denominator here. Grams is in the numerator, because you remember this is equal to this quantity over 1. So our units cancel. We're left with formula units in the numerator of our last conversion factor. And this is the units that we need. So the units in the denominator of the last conversion factor are the units that you should be asked for in the problem. And it is here. In this problem, we have moles in the denominator, moles in the numerator, liters in the denominator, liters in the numerator. We're left with grams. We want to define mass in grams, and we're good to go. In number three, moles and moles cancel. Okay, grams and grams cancel. We're left with atoms. We need to define atoms. The problem is set up. In number four, we need to define mass over volume to find density. Density is in grams per liters. We have grams and liters set up properly, so we're good to go. In number five, if we take a look at our units, we have liters in the numerator here and liters in the denominator here. And that leaves us with grams per mole. Grams per mole is the unit of molar mass. So we are in the correct units, so the problem is set up properly. So those are important things that you can do um, to double check that your problem is set up before you do the math. After you do the math, you should be analyzing the magnitude or the bigness of your number and asking yourself, does it make sense? If you are finding the number of atoms or other types of representative particles, chances are you're going to have a big number, 10 to the 22nd, 10 to the 23rd, 10 to the 24th. Because atoms are tiny, you're going to have a lot of them in your substance. If your quantity is in grams, your numbers aren't going to be as big. Okay, you might have 100 grams, maybe 500 grams, maybe less than 100 grams, maybe even a little less than 1 gram. Okay, but you should not have something like 10 to the 23rd grams. That's a big red flag. And by the way, something like 10 to the 23rd grams is greater than the mass of the Earth. <laughs> So we have no substances that are going to be that big. So that's a red flag for you. Answers in moles could be a relatively large number in the hundreds, or it could be a number less than one. Again, you're not going to have something like 10 to the 23rd moles. This is too big of a quantity. So keep those things in mind as you set up your problems, and it can help ward off unintended errors.